Greetings, Sir and Sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome back to the Sandbox mode, in which I have been messing around with the Plague Bearer. Now, one criticism with the Plague Bearer a lot of people seem to have is that a lot of the cannons were underwater. Now, thankfully, this didn't actually affect the cannons. If it did, half of the shots simply wouldn't fire, or would be firing in a very different way way to the cannons above the water and you would see a wide variance in where the shells went. But regardless of that, I've decided to make our all of our cannons now above the water. However, I feel like I may have gone a little bit too far, the water is a little bit below where it used to be. And we now have flying plague bearers, and yes, these do indeed work completely well, all on their own, flying through the air. Both of these are currently not online, and these are both modified versions of the plague bearer, in addition to the simple fact they are flying. So altered, apparently, it gave me an absolute coughing fit. So, they've been altered not only in the way of having them fly, but also in the centre, I've put the ammunition and all of the weapons very close together, so if one of the cram cannons gets destroyed, it should cause a chain reaction which will utterly obliterate the ship, which will be very fun to see indeed. So the first one of these to hit the other in the centre or cause any catastrophic damage should, should, result in the whole thing blowing up. So, make sure we're not paused, and... Taking Taking enabled. Ah, a little bit unfair there. Okay, here comes the volley from the enemy, missing quite badly, in fact. Okay, I can see the problem here. So, because we are doing this on the land campaign sandbox mode, it didn't have maximum on this setting here, the detection accuracy. Whereas in the nightmare mode, it does actually have it all the way to times one, because a lot of the enemy designs simply don't have detection equipment, because that would have made designing them a lot more difficult. So, of course, because of that, I didn't build the Plague Bearer with detection systems, because there was no point in it, at least in that campaign. Campaign. Now they should be able to see each other. There we go. And the first volley actually aiming, hitting the side, but not doing as much as I was going to hope. The front of our Plague Bearer is very badly damaged, and are they going to hit the center? No, they are going to hit the back. I think they are aiming for the ammunition barrels, which is our main storage. Oh, did that go through? No, the cannons are actually intact, at least the main body of them. But it does look like the hostile version is going to be the victor here. Oh, a lot of lag here, which is understandable considering the size of the vehicles. Wow, they are lasting way longer than expected. None of the cannons are online. Apparently they weren't as explosive as I was hoping though. Showcasing just how hollow the Plague Bearers actually are. Uh oh. Has ours lost its engine? Well, it certainly lost the front. That was a chain reaction from the guns. The advanced cannons are still firing, but seems like nothing else. The enemy one has lost its, its forward drive, but nothing else. I can't believe how long these take to die, even when being shot point blank by cram cannons. Oh, I fell off apparently. Wow. Now that is a very cool sight. A lot of explosions from their own barrels. I apparently have messed something up here when I was changing them over. There's a good chance I may have accidentally removed some of the fail safes whilst I was trying to connect all the guns together. That is being held together by that little sliver of metal and wood and nothing else. Oh yeah, the torpedoes, they're somewhere on the floor. Look, there they are. Being distracted from the giant ship in, in the air, currently being destroyed. 
On the upside, it is also showcasing the power of the PID system. It's still floating stable at this much health lost. And that's because the PID system can automatically detect when thrusters have been destroyed and then change how powerful other thrusters are accordingly. So to actually get these out of the sky, you're going to have to remove a very large percentage of the thrusters or of course the engines, which are the only heavily armoured section of the vehicle. Is that moving forwards, or is that just moving forwards because it's trying to turn? It's moving forwards because it's trying to turn. Only the little advanced cannons can actually fire. I am tempted to add a cram cannon to the front now, so that when we're facing an enemy, we can still fire. Just because being in, being in the air like this, we are more likely to be facing the target head-on a lot more often. Oh, is it finally falling from the sky? It looks like it's being moved around a bit. We're not going until one of these things die. Be it from its own destruction, because I need to work on these things, or be it from the enemy actually killing it. The fact it's not broadsiding is at least letting me learn. I've only just changed these to be able to fly, so I wasn't expecting a smooth run anyway. Is that moving into RAM, our version? Oh, bit of lag here. The cram cannons are online and taking out the front spike for some reason. Maybe I don't have aim point selection on after all. I really don't know. Okay, that's definitely going to make it fall because I just saw all of the roll thrusters get destroyed. Except for two of them, so maybe it won't. Is it finally falling from the sky? Yeah, we really need to put the failsafes back on. Only the back thrusters are on, which do have the ability to cause pitch. It just can no longer roll both ways. And then finally, the flying plague bearer goes from the sky. Well, we found a lot of problems, so I'll fix those before we get back into the campaign. And with that, and as the allied plague bearer finally gets eradicated, I'm now going to jump back over into the campaign and show the enemy the flying plague bearer. Just before we do get back into the campaign, it turns out I was correct. The fail-safes were removed when I was messing around with things, so all of the cannons weren't detecting if they were going to hit their own vehicle when they fired, resulting in a lot of friendly fire from both of the flying plague bearers. Okay, that looks pretty cool. I wasn't too certain about using the smoke generators, but that does look fairly awesome, although it doesn't quite obscure the keel as much as I would like it to. Now, of course, we can remove the keel, because that was being useful in the water, considering how our entire ship simply floats, naturally, since it's completely made out of wood, but... It looks just very ship-like still. I think removing the bottom section would make the whole thing look a little bit less natural, so I will be leaving that in. Do I like the smoke effect? Yes. Yes, I do. Perhaps making it a little bit thicker, maybe two thick rather than one thick, might be a little bit better, but I do approve of the smoke. Hello, little Nurgle's Rot. Would you like to be able to fly as well? Because people have been asking me how do I actually get the weird creations I have made to fly around. So let's do some very, very quick and very silly engineering on this thing. Okay, this looks like a good space. It's got the AI. It's our most protected section with a metal exoskeleton. So, where is the thing I'm after? Control, we are going with the PID as always. We're going to have three of them. 
One will be set for pitch, one will be set for altitude, and one will be set for a rolling. There we are. Put mirror mode on. Let's get this thing out of the water so I can see what I'm actually doing here. Now, I'm not going to bother to put these on the inside because... Honestly speaking, I'm remarkably lazy, and this is going to be only for this singular Nurgle's Rot to make it a more effective harvester. There is the center of mass, and it's between two blocks, as always. No, it's not. That's fantastic for me. Put that there. Now, the Nurgle's Rot should be pretty light if you remove this lead keel at the bottom, which is absolutely hideous, I may add. So let's remove this. This will remove a load of weight. And then I think just four thrusters will get the job done. We should put some thrusters on, on the top as well, which makes it a lot more balanced, especially if it takes a lot of damage on one side. But once again, we are doing this as quickly as possible just to showcase how this actually works. The only concern I do have is we have very limited engine power. So I'm going to remove the propellers so they don't constantly turn on during flight. I haven't done this with the Plague Bearer because I kind of like seeing it just think and pretend that it's still in the water. That makes me happy. Uh, center of mass is where now? Is that between two blocks or is that... Yeah, it's between two blocks. That's okay. The PID system should deal with that okay-ish. There we are. So that's how I want that to be. Back to the main room. This isn't the main room. These are the cannons, and those are the batteries. Where's the main room? It's difficult sometimes. Okay, let's just do this. Whee! Okay, for altitude, I would like it to get to 60, and we're probably going to need to put quite a bit of force into this. Or maybe not. We can have it very, very slow and just have it as the default. In fact, it's already saturating the output, so perhaps just leaving it like that might be the best thing. Although we could try to make it slower as well by messing around with this. I think I'm going to leave that as it is, as the fog rolls in. The next one we need to do, of course, is the pitch. We just leave that as it is, and that should do some work. Ah, I have done one very small problem here, in that I forgot to change how the thrusters work. So the back thrusters should always be classed as thruster reverse, and the roll thrusters should always be classed as the roll thruster. If you don't do this, the PID will not understand what is what. Okay, I need some more pitch on that. I'm hoping the back one will be able to deal with this. If not, we'll have to put some upwards facing thrusters on the front. Pitch. More power to the pitch, please. How about 40 there? Without messing around with the rest of the settings. Okay. Altitude should go to 60. We haven't, we haven't put enough power into it. This is the altitude. Let's increase that to make it a bit more stable. And we watch. A lot of this comes down to just tweaking these three values until you see what you want, and then learning how this graph works. Right now I'm just doing this really, really quickly, and not really getting into anything specific. So I do apologize if this isn't really helping too many people, but this is just a, look, this is the basics of how this works. And there we are. Look how stable that is already. And that's with me doing this very badly. Do not think I'm doing this well at the moment, because I'm certainly not. Okay, the roll wants to be at zero. It was probably already doing that with this much, but I'm going to increase it a little bit. We probably won't see any change, though, unless we... Let's just go to a test stimulus for a second. There we are, forcing ourselves to roll to the side, which, by the way, looks awesome. Then putting it at zero, and let's see how it deals with a sudden change. How much is that going to overshoot? Yeah, we should have put this way stronger. Although we could, of course, mess around with these two as well. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. That could be better, but that's absolutely fine. So now, there we are. We have a flying Nurgle's Rot in all of its glory. And the reason why I did this is because this is going to make harvesting so much easier, because now it's always going to be above the water. All, all I really need to do now is add some side thrusters, and then it's completely finished. It'll be able to turn, we already have a front thrust, and the ground controller tends to do well with thrusters, but if it doesn't, we can always mess around with 
the control blocks and then change that with the custom controller. So there we are, we have a flying Nurgle's Rot. See how easy that is? Look how ridiculously balanced it is, even when doing it as poor as that. Now, you can tweak all of those things, and when you mouse over them, it basically tells you what they do, and you can get it to such a perfect fine art that even if half of the ship is destroyed, it will be able to completely right itself. How it is right now, it's very vulnerable to losing the thrusters on the very front and the very back, which will most likely cause it to just go straight into the water. But for now... Loud noises, let's see if it can stop itself from rocking fast enough. Mm, might want to s speed up how quickly it tries to right itself, but that's fine. That'll do for now, as the green sea rolls in. That looks so weird. It's so eerie how stable it is. Okay, enough of me waffling on. I'm going to convert the Plague Bearer into its flying form and then test it out versus some enemies over here. Satellite, go and keep it company. And so the Plague Bearer takes to the skies in the campaign, and I've decided the back missiles here, the back torpedoes, have now actually been converted into proper missiles, because honestly, trying to get these to work as torpedoes from this height, it's just never going to hit the target. So they are somewhat long range because of the low thrust, variable thruster, heavy on for fuel, fragment missiles. Simple, effective, going to do a little bit of damage and possibly take out some AIs. It's time for the Plague Bearer's first ever true battle, and I would just like to say, at the moment, we are earning a ludicrous amount of resources per minute, and of course this is massively slowing down the enemy's ability to attack us, as this is hurting its economy. So, maybe we can probably finish this campaign in one, maybe two more episodes. Either way though, I really want to build a new vehicle for the next episode, so that will be something else entirely, but for now let's focus on this. So Plank Bearer, please go over here, and then our two little rot rays, you can go Lifting. over here. Lifting. The one concern I do have is that the rot rays fly at around about the same altitude as the Plague Bearer, and they can't really see their allies, so there's a good chance they are going to ram into this, unless this is going to broadside a little bit further away, which I may have forgot to change from the sandbox mode, so we may see a few collisions. On the enemy's team, we have a Tombstone, we have a Nuko Lantern, we have a Headless Swimmer, a Hex, is there something else? No, it's just the Hex. And finally, an enemy I don't think I've seen before? That's really expensive for its volume, but I don't think that is an enemy we've seen before, so hopefully we will get to see something brand new. And I'm going to put this as far as possible here, just to make sure that there's a small chance the nuke will ram into the tombstone. It's time for the very first true test of the Plague Bearer. Now sadly, even with the failsafe and everything I can put into place, with the weapons set up as they are, which is definitely not suited for firing downwards, sometimes the cannons will hit each other. The reason being, the cannon will fire, the shell will start moving, and then the other barrel will move into the way. There's no way for the game to really detect that's going to happen until it happens, so occasionally we will see explosions from the Plague Bearer from its own weapons. Now, there are ways to fix this with firing limitations among different things, but that would make it so it's not quite the same ship, and I would have to do some basic changes to the guns themselves, which I'm not really happy to do. Anyway, on the enemy team we have the Ghost Pirate Ship, the Bone Zone, the Pumpkin Chunkin, and finally we have the Nuko Lantern. Let's see how it does. Okay, I'm going to pause time just for a second because I don't think the Rot Rays are online. Now they are. You should be in combat. And battle commences! Our new missiles are already firing, and there goes the volley! If that hits, which it probably won't because it started turning after it was fired, that will do so much damage. Oh, will it clip the back? No, sadly not. The flak is hitting the, the Nuko Lantern and has successfully defended against it. Fantastic. 
Our missiles are going towards the huge enemy pumpkin and are doing a little bit, although with how heavy the armor is, I can't imagine too much. The broadside, however, just took off the face of the enemy. Uh-oh. Incoming problems. The enemy ghost ship is getting really close. Oh, will it actually end up ramming us? Well, it definitely hits us with its cannon, but no! Just about skimming to the side. Although that did cause a lot of movement on the ship. Now hopefully the other side should be able to do some serious damage. Although by the looks of things, the AI is currently offline on our ship. Seriously, how on earth did you manage to- oh. Well done, like that was the most perfectly aimed shot ever, just completely knocked out our AI. Hopefully the rot flies and the Nurgle's rot will come to our aid. Did I accidentally put them into fleet move or was that already ha as it was? Either way, a bit of a derp there. The self-repair mechanism should eventually repair our ship. Now here's the problem with building this completely out of wood. Oh, very large radius explosives kind of do a lot of damage. The Rai's there, finally up and harassing the enemy ghost ship. Two of our Nurgle's rots have currently entered the battle, and the ghost ship will be going down. Wow. The ghost ship has a really powerful set of cannons. They're definitely stronger than the cannons on the Plague Bearer, just in much smaller number, and honestly, that does work better. It just does. The ghost ship is a really impressive vehicle. Not only does it look fantastic, it actually does incredibly well as well. I also like the pattern on the small missile launcher at the front. Okay, two damage, the enemy is down, fantastic. Time to do some repair work on what was once the AI section. Oh, I see, it took out the ammunition, which... No, that shouldn't have took out the AI as well. It must have been the second shot. The first shot destroyed the ammo, the second shot then went into the same location and finished off the AI. So the Plague Bearer is just going to float there in really eerie stillness. The enemy bone zone is here with its really annoying advanced cannons. Hopefully they can be taken out before they remove the ammunition again. Nope, never mind, ammunition has already been removed again. I should also move the ammunition up, because it's at the bottom, which was originally a good place, being that it's meant to be in the water, but now we're above the water, the ammunition is in the most vulnerable place possible. And so our little Nurgle's rots are here to save the day, in their cheap glory. To be honest, for their cost, the Nurgle's rots are very good, because they are really cheap. And now I think about it, we could actually spawn in the hovercraft from the land campaign. That would work here. Well, actually, now I've said that, I think what we're going to do is make a very close to the water hovercraft in the next episode. That will be the next vehicle we create. So, we've learned something then. The Plague Bearer really needs to have some work done to the back because it's more vulnerable than ever. Oh, look at it trying to spin. But, on the upside, it has managed to stay airborne, even with two of the back thrusters completely eradicated. Just for a bit of silliness, here we are with our newest hovercraft from the Ashes of the Empire campaign. Now, this is now, as of recording this, technically an outdated model. I have made a brand new version of this with a lot of changes in terms of thrust, armor, and the weaponry but that will be revealed when we actually go back to the land campaign. So here we are, with our hovercraft very weirdly placed in this campaign. What I really should do is make them look a little bit more nurgly, give them a green paint scheme and do stuff like that. And I am very tempted and I may do that for the next episode. Although I very well may just make a brand new hovercraft in the Halloween theme, now that it's the middle of November. But even so, Halloween is in our hearts at all times, so as soon as these are fully loaded, we're going to send them into a battle. I actually have very high hopes for them. They should do well against designs which are made to be silly, even if they are incredibly cheap and incredibly small. Okay, so as soon as that last clip finished, we are instantly under attack by a single hex. 
I feel like this campaign's ability to spawn in enemies is a little bit off. What I think's happened is that this Hex is a minor force from the portal up here, which was simply going down here to reinforce one of the tiles, because it seems a little bit off only having a single vehicle, and that's the only occasion I can really think of that happening, so... I guess let's kill the single Hex. Force time, where is the Hex? Let's see if we can see the singular enemy. Oh, there it is, right there in the middle. A little bit small in the background there. Hello! Oh, it would have been so nice if one of those cram cannons hit, but... Missiles and flak weapons, all focusing on one target, and down it goes. Oh no. Oh, thank you. I was really thinking the Plague Bearer's shot was going to destroy the enemy then. Oh, it's okay though, because the Nurgle's Rot almost destroyed one of the Plague Bearer's sides. And of course when I said enemy I meant the Nurgle's Rot. Oh, we have actually... <sighs> Why did I put all of the vehicles around the enemy? Because when they fired, and, and we knew they were going to miss because they were shooting cram cannon shots, they went through the enemy and hit the things behind it, which of course was our ships. And then I completely messed up what I was trying to say because I was so distracted by everything going on. What I was meant to say was I was scared that the Plague Bearer was going to completely eradicate all of our ships, including the Nurgle's Rots. I have no idea what I actually said, but I don't think it was that. Let's continue, shall we? Well, let's see how well the tanks will do, versus a Bone Drake, a Bone Drake, a Bone Drake, a Candy Corn Cruiser, and the Candy Corn Cruiser. And of course, we are using our test tanks. So, let's see just how good they really are. I do have high hopes here. Although they're quite cheap, I really do believe they're going to do well. So, here's hoping I'm correct with that. I really thought the game was going to crash there. Everything froze up, but it seems like we are here to stay. Okay, two of our tanks are already firing at one of the cruisers, and yep, because it's mostly wooden armor, that just went straight through. Ooh, a little bit scared about about, uh, about those bone drags. Speaking of my strong point there, and one of them destroying the other. Two of the Bone Drakes there going after this tank. Thankfully, they are a little bit slow, and the tanks are very, very fast. Or at least quick for what they are. The one tank being destroyed by a combination of the cruiser fire and our own fire. The Drakes being mostly ignored, since these vehicles do tend to go for larger opponents, but now they are crashing into each other and being taken out very swiftly. Or maybe they're not. There we are. It seems like that one wasn't loaded at the start. Just about clipping that bone drag there. One last one still trying to move, and the shot's eventually getting there. Considering we have the, the detection systems currently on maximum, so we don't even need them, that was a pretty poor showing of trying to aim at the target. Once again, very weird. Why are you so bad at trying to hit the target there? Perhaps the detection systems actually mess up if you have the required on pretty much zero. I really don't know, to be honest. This is the first time having that happen. And we have proven these tanks to be completely capable of fighting against land opponents. Or, of course, it could just be the fact this one's barrel is damaged. Very proud of those cannons. A little bit disheartened by the display, to be perfectly honest. They derped up a lot more than I've seen ever before, but it seems like this is a cursed campaign where things like that seem to happen quite a lot. Either way, though, a very decisive victory for the hover tanks, and showcasing that frag shells 
are really, really underrated. And with that, though, I am actually going to call the episode. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. In the next episode, we are going to make a brand new hovercraft, this time without having to worry about volume limits, and hopefully it will be fairly effective. It seems I need to look into a few weirdnesses with these tanks, although I'm hoping a lot of that was fixed, as like I said at the start when I first made them, these are now technically the older versions and I have retrofitted them already. I do also have to do some work on the Flying Plague Bearer. Either way though, thank you for watching and goodbye.